Hello, everyone. Good evening, good morning, um, wherever you are in the world. Um, uh, welcome to this year's Bosnian and Herzegovinian Film Festival based in New York City, which is very virtual. Hello, everyone. Uh, we apologize for having some technical difficulties. We do have um, on in this Q&A, Nermin Hanzikic, who is uh, a director of the film uh, Full Moon. Uh, and um, our, uh, uh, our Q&A moderator, uh, Diana Yelicha, is going to try to reconnect and uh, continue the conversation. Um, I guess in, uh, before, uh, until we, we get, get Diana back online, uh, Nermin, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, about the film that, uh, that you created? I believe this, is, this was your first feature film, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So at the beginning, hi everyone. My name is Nermin Hamzagic. I'm a director. I'm from Sarajevo. Uh, Full Moon, uh, which you saw or are, are about to see, uh, is my first feature film. Uh, so, so after I graduated from the Academy of Performing Arts in Sarajevo, uh, I began working in the theater and worked in, in theater for years. And then somehow started to, to make this cross from, from uh, theater to the medium of film. Um, so producing this first feature film um, was a challenging experience for all of us uh, due to the concept of producing this film. This film was shot entirely in 15 days uh, and it was co-produced uh, with our national broadcaster. So we filmed it on one location and th this was actually the, the reason why we could shoot it so very fast. Um, it deals with an important topic for our society. Um, it's concerning our issue with corruption, uh, which I tried to address not only as a crime, but also as a um, corruption of the spirit, uh, because corruption is also changing the way you, you behave and the way you perceive the world around you. So I really wanted to aim after this topic and uh, by doing that to, to also create a portrait of, of the contemporary society in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, so the cast of the of this film, um, the, it it lists some uh, names that are really well known in uh, in, in Bosnian uh, uh, cinema. Uh, I wanted to see uh, how, how did you go about selecting the the, the main character? What, what was your kind of reasoning? Of, uh, uh, you know, Alban Ukai's uh, mm. uh, role made a lead role in the film, as well as uh, some other people in the. Mm. So I really had this, this uh, pleasure to, to uh, be able to work with really regional big names uh, regarding the, the uh, kinematography of the Yugoslavian or uh, the Balkans. Um, what, I, what I wanted to, to and how I worked with them is basically that uh, very early in the process I was more or less sure uh, how I will cast the, the the main roles and uh, what I did is that uh, I invited all the, the actors who were playing police officers uh, and took them to real police stations. So that's how we prepared for the role and that's how I also worked with Alban, which then of course helped them to, to, to somehow uh, get the sense and touch about uh, creating the character of a police officer. This also helped me in, in writing because the writing was, the script writing was never ended until days before shooting because we all, all tried to input as much as possible real research that we could get. Uh, we also did it with, with, with uh, Mirela Lambic, she's playing the doctor uh, uh, in the movie and we also arranged that she spent a few nights with the ER teams in Sarajevo. So uh, all this concept of work really uh, helped us to make real portraits which um, then also helped the actors in, in creating their roles. Uh, how how's, how's, uh, long ago did you start the work on this film? How, how long time? How much time did it actually take it from the? Well, it it took me from the, the, from the main idea almost two years. Uh, I really started to somehow um, research stories which I would like to 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 tell. So there are different mini stories that that somehow uh, either happen or happened in a, a bit changed way. I collected the stories from newspapers, from people I knew and so on. And then I said, okay, how could I bring all this 
uh, stories to one big story in the film. So then I started to write and rewrite the concept of this police station at the night of, of the full moon and so on. So yeah, almost almost two years. And then at a certain point, uh, uh, Emina Omerovic, the, the co-writer, joined me at the process. And then we started to really finalize the film a script uh, for the shooting. Um, I believe that we, we had a conversation right before the start here, um, and uh, you actually mentioned that you, you also uh, worked with some of other uh, directors and filmmakers in, in, uh, in Bosnia, uh, in, including, I believe it was uh, Dani Stanovic and uh, with a few others. Um, did, how, did they, how did that work with, with those filmmakers influence your, um, uh, your work? How, how did it influence uh, of how you uh, expressed yourself in, on, on the film, in, in, especially in, in particular maybe in this one? Um, I feel very privileged to be able to, to work with Dan Stanwyk, but also with Aida Begic. Um, for a young director or less experienced director, I think that's one of many different ways, but that's one that I choose for myself is that you uh, start working uh, with more experienced colleagues. And I was very lucky that they really accepted me and shared their knowledge and experience and really uh, allowed me to participate in their projects. So by being so close to them, I could really learn, learn from their mistakes or uh, lean on their experience. Uh, this is also sometimes um, something which works in, in, in my advance in sense of that we're a small community, so people are, are really accessible. So I also had the possibility to uh, send them scripts to, uh, to get their um, notes about what they think about one version, the other version, and so on. So in this sense, I think that the older colleagues, older in sense of more experienced co uh, colleagues, are really nurturing us. It also has to do something with the academy because all, all uh, directors mostly work at the academy. So uh, even from the student days, you somehow create a connection to them and you can approach them and discuss some views. So for me, it worked really well. Uh, it felt uh, a right way to access all this industry, but also this big uh, family of filmmakers and, and it helped me a lot really. So we, we all know it's it's really difficult to uh, make movies in Bosnia. I mean, funds are very limited. Uh, did did you get uh, did you have enough support or, or it, would it make would it have made a difference if you had more more uh, support from uh, other sources uh, other than uh, than what what's usually available in in Bosnia? So. I mean, this film is really low budget. I mean, it's be, uh, beyond the, the standard what you concern being a, a low budget film. But we really don't like to talk about it because we don't want to, to somehow have a, a kind of excuse like, oh, this is a low budget film. No, I mean, no one cares how much you spend on your movie. It's either good or not. Uh, what would we or could we have been hmm, with more money? Well, probably we would pay people better or at least pay everyone. I really had, uh, I was very lucky that people uh, accepted to work below any standard in sense of payment. Uh, so probably we would pay them. And uh, what actually money does is it buys your time and, and, and um, collaborators. In this sense, I had the possibility to work with everyone because no one cared about the money. They just said, we like the story and let's make this film. Um, but the concept of funding, why it's, I mean, when we talk about one film, uh, but the concept of find, funding films is important in the sense of that uh, nowadays we cannot talk about the film industry in Bosnia because film happens happen in, in an irregular period of time. We shoot approximately one or none film a year, which is compared to the success we have is just unbelievable and and for years now we've really tried to talk to the politicians and somehow um, make them construct a policy about culture not only films culture in general uh, but until now we really didn't succeed in in, in this approach so um, i think that that uh, investing and having a strategy is investing money in culture would help um, my younger colleague to come more faster to her to their first features, uh, so now people have really to they have really to wait for a long time to um, 
somehow find the money to, to make their films. And I think that's a pity. Uh, so it looks like we have Diana also on the back online. So I'll pass it on to her. If, uh, Diana Hi, everyone. Will... Can you hear me? Yes. I'm so sorry. I'm having a lot of uh, internet connectivity issues right now. I don't know if it's this torrential rain in New York City. Something is conspiring against us. But I'm glad Damir was there uh, to hold the torch. I'm also uh, still not hearing uh, quite well that the audio is delayed. Nermin, um, I don't know how much of my initial welcome to you uh, uh, was broadcast. So I want to say welcome again. And I'm so sorry that I abruptly disappeared. My phone right now, hopefully that will hold together better. Um, um, and I did want to say a few words uh, of introduction for you. Uh, and perhaps Damir, you already uh, uh, covered some of that because I abruptly disappeared. So I don't know how much of my introduction was heard. I actually allowed uh, Nermin to introduce himself. So but uh, feel free to add anything more. Okay, well, uh, I just want to welcome you for the first time in a conversation um, because we've uh, featured your films at the festival before. Uh, we played your feature length documentary Soul Train, which I believe you made in 2015. Is that correct? Which was a wonderful music documentary. And at the festival, we have a kind of a long tradition of documentary, mu music themed documentaries, and this uh, fit right in and was uh, really uh, well received and regarded by our audiences, a group of musicians or rappers traveling through Bosnia and bringing music and bringing people together through music. And also your short uh, narrative which I believe won uh, our award for best short films. So congratulations on that. And I know this is your feature narrative debut, uh, Full Moon, the one that we're featuring this year. And uh, as before, before I disappeared and my internet went down, um, it has been nominated for the European Film Award uh, due, uh, for best feature uh, debut. Um, is new discoveries is that the name of the category yes, yes it thank is. Uh, congrats that as well when will you know about um, the results of that uh, well uh, the the ceremony is planned for December this year so only, the only thing we can do now is, is wait because the concept of, of the European Academy is very similar or almost the same like the American Film Academy it's basically now that uh, all the members of the Academy ha have the time to, to watch all the movies and vote for the movies. But for us, uh, to be honest, it's already a huge success. I mean, we won in a sense of being there listed among six films. Uh, we were a small film from a small country. So in this sense, we really celebrated it already as a huge accomplishment. So in this sense, I'm just now enjoying and watching films from other colleagues and that's all I do now. Absolutely. And you have been proud of, um, this is such an amazing uh, success for, for your first film. And uh, I want that you have worked closely together um, uh, with all of uh, important uh, filmmakers from Bosnia, Dani Stanovic on Death in Sarajevo. You were his assistant director, I believe, that film. Uh, yeah, we, we, we uh, just talked about this. Remember, second unit director with Aida Begic, right, on her film Children of Sarajevo. Yeah, we, we basically were just talking about that when you joined us again. So yeah, it's it's. I, I think it's a great uh, great experience. I learned a lot from 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 this uh, collaborations with with my older colleagues. Um, I I mean I I cannot suggest in the sense everyone has to choose their own path. I, I just thought that uh, it's important to to get access to people who are more experienced and willing to share their experience. So by being so close to them, I could really learn and, and I could really observe. And, and they're also very specific in sense, they're very open. So they really welcomed me and, and, and somehow uh, nerved me and, and uh, helped me not only during the process of working with them, but also afterwards. I mean, then you somehow create a re relation to them and, and you feel free to, to share uh, all your thoughts or your fears 
So in this sense, I'm, I really think I was very privileged to uh, be able to work with them and also to know them. I can imagine what an amazing um, a learning experience that was uh, for you working with these directors. You also teach an assistant at the Sarajevo Academy of the Performing Arts, um, which is another uh, amazing contribution now for the next generation, I believe, of filmmakers uh, uh, in Bosnia. But to your film that we are featuring this year, a feature narrative film, which is in competition for best feature narrative film and also is up for the audience award as all the films in the program are. Um, so audience uh, uh, who are watching is remember to vote. Um, can you tell us a little bit where it came from? I think you, uh, you co-wrote it with Emina Omerovic, I believe. Um, uh, so, uh, when did you start thinking about this this specific concept for a story that was over one night? That's where the title of the film "Full Moon" comes from. It's the full moon night, and it and it's kind of like it has it, it tells many intertwined in so many ways the microcosm of many issues that are uh, 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 burdening or plaguing Bosnia, contemporary Bosnia today. So where did that idea for that particular structure come from? Um, well, as I told already, Damir, uh, I started to research a lot the, the, the society where I live and, and, and somehow I came across diverse newspaper articles about diverse topics, uh, which I then started to collect. And of course, uh, I talked a lot to Amra Bakshi Chamo. She's the producer of the film, so if she would be here, she would probably say that uh, I came with diverse scripts, uh, a lot of different films, um, high-budget films and so on. And then at one point, we started really to discuss, okay, what's realistic in, in the sense of what could we uh, probably shoot. Uh, and somehow it was her creative input to, to, she said, try to think about one location, try to bring all these stories together at one place. And then I really started to, to, to think about this and I said, yeah, well, let's try and make it. Uh, so I started to research and, 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 and write this story. And then the, at a certain point, I invited Emina Omerovic to join me in, in writing. Uh, and then we wrote um, the script um, together. Uh, we also worked with the script uh, in a specific way in sense of uh, that uh, I casted the, the actors very early in the process. So um, I was able to send them into research. Uh, the, the, the actors playing police officers, we sent to the police stations, the doctor to the doctor and so on. Uh, and we also collected their experience and their uh, knowledge uh, and research into the final script. So uh, in this sense, when we started to shoot, uh, I think everyone felt comfortable in the sense of knowing um, that it's, it's not just only fiction for them, but they somehow had the first-hand experience. Mm -hmm. And you have an amazing, even though there, there is a lead character in Hamza, played by Alban Ukai. I wanted to ask you about uh, uh, casting him in the lead role, even though the film in many ways is kind of an, an ensemble film, an ensemble of many amazing actors as supporting characters. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about casting all of them and particularly the lead? Uh, well, um, sure. I mean, it is an uh, uh, ensemble film. Um, in a way, but also there is the central story of, of uh, Hamza, uh, played by Al Banukai, which then somehow, somehow connects them and, 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 and he's connected to all of these uh, stories. Uh, well, uh, I had really uh, the luck to work with Tim Kagreen. Uh, she's one of uh, our prominent casting directors. And so she, working with her was really important for me in the sense of, uh, although we, we are a small community and we think that we know everyone, uh, you will really sometimes tend to just don't think about people. So in this sense, it was very uh, helpful. Uh, with Alban, I, I worked uh, years ago when I graduated from the academy in theater. So it, this was not our first collaboration, but a first after a long while. Um, and and I, I mean, it was a fantastic experience working with him. I mean, he's a such professional and, and devoted colleague and actor. Um, 
and I really, uh, I mean, you know, it's when, when you're shooting your first feature, then you also have this amount of pressure of, of doing it right or, or not doing it wrong. So um, his experience and, 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 and talent and um, devoted, he was very devoted to this project, helped me a lot. Uh, so I could really rely on him and, and also on the DOP and, and the whole cast. So in this sense, it was really a um, collective undertaking. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you already uh, responded to this question, but how long did the actual shoot take? Uh, we shot this film in 15 days. Night, <laughs> to be more precise. Uh, it was possible because we had this co-producer of the national broadcasters, so uh, we could use their facilities and we constructed this police station and, and everything we needed there. So it was a sense of uh, studio-like shooting, which allowed us then to work um, faster and basically we could do it in 15 days to be honest we didn't even have the money to afford the 16 days so we had to shoot it in 15 days uh, it was intense but um, also it, it was a very nice experience because we were a very small crew uh, and we really tried to make the best out of it and i'm very proud it has it has this in a time and space you the actual way most of the most of the stories take place in the police station right and with this revolving um uh, and the stories converge and overlap and the sort of connecting tissue is our detective who's also dealing with the with the drama of uh, his wife being in labor and and that being a but I mentioned already that the film in so many ways through these little stories sort of a micro social issues uh, that are pertinent in Bosnia. Um, do you want to speak a little more about that? Why these particular stories are um, pretty um, um, uh, um, um, and women um, uh, being prostitutes or uh, doing sex work because uh, that was one one of the most for me moving moments in the film when the young girl ye yells at her mother and says what do you want me to do do you want me to do nails in the at, at home just like you do for customers uh, all sorts of issues a, a father a desperate father uh, stealing money from a, a, a bank machine or atm is this it's called here in the u.s because his child is sick so where did you from and how did you draw uh, inside on these particular sub subplots. I mean, unfortunately, these are all stories that uh, really happened in sense of that or this way. So we constructed them; they're fictional in sense of what how they're represented in the film, but they're all um, the result of a collective uh, research. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, 25 years uh, after the war, we still uh, live in a country which is not moving forward um, economically, socially. Uh, justice-wise, justice I mean, uh, you have promises from the politicians and so on that we will move faster to the EU, but until we close uh, and make a point on the, on the past uh, and start to build a healthy society based on the truth, uh, without that there is no prosperity. So uh, I'm the generation, the post-war generation, in a, in a way, uh, uh, dealing with this never-ending transition, which means the transition from socialism to... to capitalism um, so we are somehow stuck in this and and all all the things you see uh, in the film are somehow dilemmas or issues that uh, my not only my but uh, my generation is dealing with uh, I mean the, the story about the young girl it's a story about um, perspective what's her perspective in a society like this I mean her mother did everything well, from her point of view, she's struggling to make them a living, but in a way you understand her that that's maybe not enough for her, that's not the future she would like to. And this constant social pressure of, of uh, being great and having money and so on. On the other hand, you have uh, three little boys, they're totally lost. I mean, they're, they're stealing old mm -hmm. cars. Uh, it's in a sense of 
in a way, it's it's not uh, the focus of their story. It's not uh, about being uh, delinquents, but it's more about um, a cry for attention. I mean, uh, then you have also the story of of this old woman um, who imagines that she hears pigeons and so on. She's lonely, and that's something that's really happening a lot uh, because a lot of families, especially young families, are moving from Bosnia and moving to, to more developed countries to somehow proceed uh, or conquer their dreams of a more prosperous life. So um, uh, I really somehow try to, to, to um, make a portrait of the society by listening to my neighbors, by listening to my family, but what are the issues we are all concerned of. And of course, uh, the, the idea of, of putting it all in the police station, it's, it's a metaphor. I mean, if, if injustice and everything, this happens at a police station, then it can be used as a metaphor and you can only imagine what happens then outside these walls. So, um, well, and, and especially when, when we started to work more on the script, uh, I talked a lot with my colleagues about how do you create a movie which deals with such social topics, but still to make it watchable. And then I decided that I would like to, to try to make a genre. That's why uh, also we decided to go after the police in sense of to at least make a film that it has this component of entertainment in sense of that you uh, really want to, to, to follow the, the, the story of the main character. I'm still here. Uh, I turn off, but you can hear me, yes? Yeah, yeah, I hear you, I hear you, yeah. Apparently my, my sound is better uh, if I turn the camera off, I've been told, so sorry that I disappeared, but I'm uh, listening to you intently. Uh, uh, this line, uh, because um, uh, it's really nuanced how you depict the society and the people that are kind of uh, complicated. Uh, when we fee when we first meet Hamza, the lead character, he's the caring family man. But then at some point, pretty early on in the film, uh, when we realize that he's a police uh, detective or inspector, we actually see him being pretty rough with some young kids right so so he can be rough he, he could he could be a bad cup too and there's also implication that there were times where um even though he's now against the corrupt police he took some money possibly too right mm -hmm. um so you're not you're not painting him as a completely innocent uh, uh good guy uh, just lost in this world of corruption mm -hmm. yeah, we are which i thought was a really um, um a nuanced portrayal and a wonderful performance performance by Alban, um, and then all of the other social issues that you're mentioning, um, um, for example, when Meliha comes and she talks about her child and grandchildren that are away, uh, and she never gets to see them, that is increasingly such a, a major experience of so many parents and grandparents in Bosnia. We don't know the, the numbers of people, but we do know that a lot of young people have and moved their young families abroad. Um, and uh, so, so that is su such an integral, we, we know it from conversations. And here in New York, a, a lot of us living emigre lives, expat lives we we it resonates with us very clearly um so uh, uh, congratulations to you for for intertwining all of those stories into this little microcosm that takes place over one night the war itself uh, does get mentioned a couple of times but in a way uh, that is almost the opposite of how it's usually mentioned uh because for example Lizudin Bayrich's character says i survived the war i'll survive you too or uh, the doctor, the female doctor says, I had better equipment or be better working conditions during the war than I do now. Is that something that you also heard from people as you were researching this film and thinking about the stories just to tell? Uh, well, actually, yes. Um, uh, you know, the, the war will always be present. I mean, it, it's an, uh, I mean, we still talk about the Second World War. I mean, wars are terrible. Uh, but they're somehow shape or, or future in the sense that um, now we live the aftermath of the war. I mean, we, Bosnia is still not a functional state because of the war. So you have uh, generations who are brought up after the war, but they never experienced what it, what it means to have a full functional state. Uh, so uh, 
and I don't think that we should uh, stop telling uh, stories about the war because, uh, you know, we still live in a, in a state where uh, mothers, sisters and other family members are still seeking uh, their missing or dead family members. So in this sense, the war in, metaphorically is still not over. Um, uh, and of course, uh, you, you see it in, this, uh, in the reflection in the film through these characters who were old enough to, to have this kind of experience. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it also always depends on, 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 on um, who you talk to. But uh, yeah, one doctor said that uh, in a sense that they had better equipment, that they uh, had a, a very um, uh, precise goal and it was to help people. And uh, now there, there is a mess uh, in sense of bureaucracy, corruption, uh, and so on, and also this generation of of uh, of Izudin Bayrovich and the character he's playing, it's uh, it's a generation of people who uh, spend their best years uh, fighting war, and and then after the war, uh, what did they get? They didn't get anything. They were forgotten and and and, and left to their own to to make a living, to to get healthcare, and so on and so on. So, of course, the, the war lives in this generation, and it's an important topic how we deal with, with the aftermath after the war. It's 25 years ago, but we still have to, to um, find a conclusion and, and to, to agree and talk about the truth, and then maybe to create a, a, the environment which will be suitable for more, the next generation to, to uh, create a, a more just the society than we are living now. Absolutely. I mean, I completely agree from my own personal experience and hearing from uh, close friends and family members. Those are the kinds of experiences in an agent that are uh, um, um, repeated. Uh, it's sort of like a state of almost like a frozen perpetual war or war by other means where we can't let go of certain um, lines of division that are only uh, favor those in power, really. Um, speaking of which, power or the powerful people in the film are sort of, uh, we, we hear hints about them there in the background. Um, character says why aren't you chasing the rich ones why are you arresting the small guys which is another thing with with such widespread corruption right in a society like Bosnia and in the region more broadly it's the little people and the small petty crimes that get uh, punished and and the big corruption um, worth millions in whatever currency um, it gets rewarded uh, with, with further political power and things like that. So that came across as well um, in your film. Um, and so, um, it, it, like I said, it's really, it's really poignant and powerful. But I, is there, and this is an election year right now, just like here in the United States, um, we are in election year, so is Bosnia. Uh, do you uh, feel... Uh, more broadly out, uh, outside of the spectrum of, of just the microcosm of the film, a sense of hope that things might change anytime soon. Uh, where might that hope be coming from or which direction might the positive change emerge from? Well, uh, first of all, I think that uh, the, the people finally um, and not only in Bosnia, also in the States, uh, need to, to, to um, make a decision and, and to decide in which uh, country they want to live. And by voting and by uh, asking for change to try to reshape the society. Uh, I think that the younger generation in, in Bosnia is more and more uh, addressing important issues for the society. Um, they don't uh, let themselves uh, be manipulated by war threatening and, and so on and so on because after a while this all nonsense becomes so obvious and I mean people are just like saying okay I mean this makes no sense and so on um, so I think the change we uh, we are looking for first need to happen in ourselves we need to address some important issues we need to start changing the society by changing ourselves um, and, and this uh, critical um, this critical outer reflection, I think, uh, started 
or at least I hope it started. So uh, honestly, I really hope that this uh, local elections will somehow um, indicate the possibility of, of change in, in, in the next uh, two years in sense of being this uh, general elections in, in the next two years. So uh, let's see, I mean, uh, as far as I can see and feel is that people are highly motivated to vote, which is very important. Uh, more and more people are now talking about uh, voting frauds and so on. And finally, uh, some uh, frauds are got getting investigated and so on. So in this sense, uh, now people take the, the votes, I think, more serious. They, they somehow um, rediscovered the force and the importance of voting and, and that their opinion matter and so on. So I really hope that... that um, people will exercise their right to vote uh, in, with the idea to, to change this uh, country. Absolutely, I think that's, that's so important and I think it was sort of the, the depression of the voters in the sense that there's no uh, meaningful alternative that really uh, turned off I, a lot of young people in particular from voting. So uh, hopefully there is more of a sense of mobilization and, and change in the positive direction. Uh, because I, I'm asking you about this and, and any sense of hope because I do sense that even though your film um, as um, 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 in these small vignettes, a lot of issues of contemporary uh, Bosnia as a society is wrong to conclude that. I didn't get the last part. Or cautious, or the cautiously. The, the, I feel like that your film ends on a cautiously optimistic note. Am I correct to um, sense that? Yes. Uh, yes, we really discussed a lot about how to end the movie and so on and so on. Uh, well, I think that's um, the only way we could conclude it in sense of uh, there must be hope or at least we need to fight to make uh, hope even possible. I mean, uh, when you said at the beginning that, that people get depressed and that's right. I mean, people get depressed and fed up by nothing changing and so on. So they need to find an inner light in, their self, in themselves to um, at least um, make themselves believe that there is a possibility. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm quite positive in that sense. I, I think the birth of his child, it's a new beginning for him and I hope also the new beginning for, for society. It's possible, it's not black and white and, and, and I very appreciate it that you mentioned this complexity, complexity of, of uh, Alban's character and he played it also, it's very hard to play it that way because it's uh, not that easy just to say to someone you're corrupt and you're not because when you make certain things very personal uh, and if I would point it that way would you pay bribe, bribe a doctor to guarantee that your kid will survive? Then this question becomes more realistic. It's then not just a moral um, idea, it's very realistic. So in this sense, we really uh, aimed after this complexity and to really make it very personal. So to conclude, I really, I really think that there is hope. There must be. <laughs> the, there without hope um and indeed um i mean uh, for for him for hamza it's not the question of uh, to bribe the doctor it's the reality and unfortunately it is the reality of the society uh, uh as as um, uh, people uh, living in such a situation know uh, but ending on an optimistic note with the child who does get the balloon which also has many overlapping meanings um with regards to um uh, uh, the character who takes his life and and is still concerned about the balloon and nevertheless um and and also this sort of being the future child, if you will, uh, getting that balloon is a, is a powerful imagery. So I want to once again thank you for this amazing. Um, I, uh, I do want to uh, give uh, Damir the heads up that I would like him to do the sign off because I unfortunately still can't be there uh, on video um, to greet you. But as my final question, maybe Damir will have uh, more questions. Um, I've, I've wanted to still obviously uh, this film is still having its festival life and awards life and that is wonderful but do you have any future ideas or projects lined up uh well 
Um, just let me briefly thank to all the audience and, uh, and of course you, the festival, uh, for making it even possible to share the film and, and to have this kind of discussion, even in this pandemic circumstances. So thank you very much for that and the audience really for not only seeing films, but also uh, supporting the festivals. Uh, well, uh, the, the, the festival life of Full Moon, it's, it's taking play, uh, play in this uh, uh, circumstances. So we're happy with every possibility we get to, to uh, screen our movie. Uh, regarding my, my new plans, uh, yes, I do have. Uh, now I'm working on a short animated film. Uh, working in the field of animation is the first time for me, and I'm collaborating with Anis Cisic. Uh, so uh, it's, it's a great experience, and I already started to write my second script for my second feature film. Well, that's fantastic. We, we uh, really look forward to Thank you. Thank you again for sharing your work with us this year. Uh, it's been our absolute pleasure um, to have this film as a uh, part of uh, our uh, uh, competition slate and uh, a feature narrative film, which, as I mentioned, I don't know if that was heard in my intro before I cut off, is up for uh, Best Feature Narrative and also up for Audience Awards. So audiences, wherever you are, if you're watching, listening and voting, uh, please uh, uh, rate every film after you've seen it, including Full Moon, because your vote counts as well. Um, uh, on behalf of me, thank you so much. Damir, do you want to say anything? Uh, yeah, actually, there's a, a comment from one of the participants, uh, well, one of the viewers in, of the Q&A from Tom. And it's not really a question, more of a, like a comment. Ad. It's kind of nice. That said. It says, um, I was noticing that some sunlight creeps in the end when Hamza is holding his newborn child. It allowed me to breathe after so much tension prevailed through the night with all the sterile uh, fluorescent light in the police station and hospital. So it's, it's so, sort of like a comment of, of a hope, I guess, that, that comes at the end of the movie and the hope of, of maybe a, a future, a better future, which it seems that what your film also prevails as well uh, throughout. So uh, I think that's a really nice note, actually, to maybe even end this. We really want to thank you to being part of the, this discussion. Uh, thank you for being part of the uh, film festival. Uh, we wish you best of luck and uh, lots of success in, in the future. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you also for promoting the BH film and the regional films uh, in the States. Uh, it's very important for us to, to have this kind of connection to all of you and, and be able to show our work. So thanks again, and warm greetings from the side. I just wanted to turn my camera on to just say thank you so much and uh, uh, to uh, sign off. Uh, thank you for um, being patient with technical issues. This is what um, uh, pandemic situations. Nermin, we really appreciated having you. And like I said, we really look forward to all your future work. Um, greetings to everyone in Sarajevo and please stay well and stay safe. Uh, uh, big greetings to all our audience everywhere wherever you're watching and keep bye bye everyone bye, bye.